I wanted to tell you about something that's happening next weekend um, and, and why we're doing it, because this is critical, the why that we're doing it. So this week I opened the newspaper um, on Tuesday, you know, the freebie newspaper, and uh, I saw the 150th year anniversary thing. You guys have been hearing about the 150 year anniversary of Canyon City, right? And so I opened the paper and God highlighted to me the word, 150, Canyon City 150 anniversary, Jubilee, right? And we know what jubilee, jubilee is like a scriptural thing, right? Seven times seven is 49, and on the 50th year, there's jubilee, and what happens during jubilee, like the dead is forgiven, slaves are free, right? The, 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 the land is restored, like there's stuff that happens during the year of jubilee. And so totally the, the, the Lord caught my attention to that, and I'm like, you know what? Um, we are like in full force supposed to be there. In full force. And so, you know, David has been working for months, working with the mayor and, and doing, and I'm going to let, he'll share for a few minutes on what's happening and the specifics. But um, in that moment, I'm like, we are absolutely not supposed to have church next weekend, next Saturday, just Saturday night, because we need to be at the event that's happening uh, at the high school on Saturday night. So whether you end up volunteering, which David will talk about, or whether you are just feet on the ground, we need to be there. So we will have church here Sunday morning, but Saturday night we will be at the high school, right? We will be at this high school starting at three o'clock and David's gonna give you more details. But then what happened is Bethel came on Wednesday night. How many of you came to Wednesday night? That was incredible, right? Incredible. And you know what? They had a word for, for our city, and they had a word for our church. And I want to read these to you because I think these are uh, super powerful and confirms that we are supposed to be there at the high school next Saturday night, okay? Um, let's see. Let me get to where I, sun, okay, here we go. Uh, the sun is shining over the city, deliverance over the story, starting within this church because we're so good at being family. Uh, they saw friends coming back together, people loving people for who they are. A city, of be a city is a beacon of light for this region. Fathers being restored to their sons, addictions broken, poverty mindset being broken, and this city being a beacon on a hill. The father chose Canyon City. He chose this place. Just like he chose Bethlehem, he chose this place. It's a mantle of love. He's given us this land. This land belongs to us. He is shifting things. Love is our weapon. He's releasing that. He's releasing that during the 150-year jubilee. As we step out, we are bringing love, a mantle of favor opening up. And they gave us... Um, uh, uh, Deuteronomy 11.24, and I just want to read that, and then I'll turn it over to David, and he can give you more specifics. Deuteronomy 11.24, it says, every place on which the sole of your foot treads shall be yours. Okay, so we, where, where are we going to be next Saturday night? Okay, and can we just honor David for coordinating this whole thing? He's done an incredible job. Um, we're going to get my mic set up as I, I talk about this event. So I, I met with the mayor um, a while back and told her that we just really felt a stirring in our, our souls to really serve our city. And um, we, we've been in constant communication. And, and so one of the things that our church will be running next week is, is we're going to be running uh, outside in the soccer practice field, outside the baseball field. We're going to just be running different games um, and different events with the other vineyard um, they have a really long name, Vineyard Christian Fellowship of Fremont County. I think that's their full name now. Um, <laughs> those are our, that's the church that planted us. So we're teaming up with them, and we're going to be running different events and games, uh, cornhole, spike ball, uh, can jam. Uh, yes, no, no bounce houses. Nope, the liability issue, Greg. 
he, he just really wanted to go to the bounce house. That's, that's what Pastor Gray, he likes to jump high. <laughs> and, and potato sack races, egg toss, um, stuff like that. So we're going to be facilitating games and really interacting with our community that way. Um, if that doesn't sound good to you, we also have all sorts of other opportunities for you, okay? Picking up trash, um, setting up different stuff, passing out water. There will be different stuff. And we have a link um, that we're going to send out in a, in a church email that you can sign up for a different time slot. But we, our goal in this isn't to go out and be like, man, we want to just be out here so we can get a ton of people to church. No, I, I want to, I'm going to do a power pause right there. <laughs> I, w- I want it to sink in. That's not our goal. Our goal out is to go out there and just to love our city. Okay. We want to be so enthusiastic when we're helping run the egg toss and a kid hits us with the egg. We just want to be like, thank you, Jesus, that we're here right? We want to be so enthusiastic about picking up trash that people go, man, what do you guys have that we don't have? We really want to just go in and we want to go in low like Jesus did when he washed the disciples' feet. Feet were nasty back then. They wore sandals all the time and it's super deserty, okay? And he got down low and washed their feet and we want to wash our city's feet. We want to just serve. And so we'll send that out in a a church-wide email. And if you're interested in serving, there will be different links in that so that you can sign up. Um, If you don't, or if you're not in our system, please fill out one of those, is it yellow cards? Yellow cards, put your email in there. White cards, thank you, Pastor Alicia. White cards, put your email in there. We want to just serve. And if you don't feel like doing any of that, man, just show up. 150 years is a big deal. And this is a really blessed place that we get to live in. We're just so blessed to be here. Okay? How does that sound? Does that make sense to everyone? Okay. We're really excited about it. I told the mayor that we were planning on canceling church service, and she texted me back in all caps, let's go. <laughs> she's, she's, we're just really excited to, to partner with our city and just really love and volunteer. And like I said, we want to get low. We want to get low. So I'm going to pray because there's been all this other stuff going on, and I need to get focused on what I feel God's calling me to share tonight. So let's, why don't you bow your heads with me. Jesus, help the speaker. Right now, we, I, just, I just pray breakthrough right now for, for just my mind and what you've just shared. God, I just pray you just help me just to follow in. Yeah, guys, this is for me not, and, and for you too. So you really want to extend a hand towards me right now. That's okay. I'll receive it. So God, thank you just so much right now for what you're doing and what you're stirring right now in people. God, just help us just to go out and love so well. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 God has been so good. Amen? Amen! God is so good. God is so good. Amen! Nice. I just wanted to make sure that's working before I get into it, okay? (laughs) Amen! Yeah, okay, great. So, um, tonight I I really felt, you know, we've, we've kind of got just this We've had a lot of people come in and just kind of release into our city. We had Wayne Drain. I don't know if you guys were here for that, but that was just a really beautiful time we got. And then we had Bethel. And, and then it comes to, to my week to preach. And I, I just, I'm going to be straight. I just really have just battled with this over and over and over again. I wrote like five different sermons throughout all five, wrote a new one. It's been a, it's been a week, but I really feel like God wants us to go after freedom. So my, my title today is Free People, Free People. Can we say that together? Free people, free people. One more time. Free people, free people. And I just really feel like we're, we're a church that's called to go and free the captives. We're a church that's called to bring light wherever we go. And it's really important that in order to do that, we need to be free ourselves. We need to, we need to get there. And I'm going to talk about that over the length of however, oh wow, time's flying by tonight. <laughs> Man, why don't you turn with me to 2 Corinthians 3, 17. Now the Lord is the Spirit, and where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. In, in order for us to have freedom and, and to really walk in being free, we have to have the Spirit. If you turn with me to Acts 19, 1 through 5, we see this even more. 
While Apollos was at Corinth, Paul took the road through the interior and arrived at Ephesus. There he found some disciples and asked them, Did you receive the Holy Spirit when you believed? They answered, No, we have not even heard that there is a Holy Spirit. So Paul asked them, Then what baptism did you receive? John's baptism, they replied. Paul said, John's baptism was a baptism of repentance. He told the people to believe in the one coming after him, that is in Jesus. On hearing this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. And when Paul placed his hands on them, the Holy Spirit came on them and they spoke in tongues and prophesied. They are 12 men in all. And right after this, we see all this crazy stuff start to happen in Ephesus. They go and burn uh, millions of dollars worth of witchcraft scroll, uh, scrolls and all sorts of other stuff. There, there is a true change that happens. And, and the reality is most of us, we accept Jesus. And in that moment, we receive the Holy Spirit. But we're like these believers in Ephesus. We don't use the Spirit. We don't walk into that freedom that's given to us. In Ephesians, it talks all about inheritance and everything that Jesus has given us. But man... We're just still sitting on John's baptism. We repent, but then we don't get to the freedom. Amen? Is that, is that a little rough? Is that, is, that, is that a little hard? It's really quiet in here. <laughs> Might be a little hard. But I, I just really feel the, this thing pressing on my spirit that we need to get back to our roots and throw everything else away. And we just need to get back to this place of where the spirit of the Lord is there is freedom. Where the spirit of the Lord is there is freedom. We, and we want to be carriers of the spirit. You know, I, I, there's been moments I, I was thinking about kind of when I, I first got touched by the Holy Spirit. And I, I was 12. My grandma had cancer. She, she passed away. I was so mad at God. Anyone else ever been mad at God? I know I'm not the only one. Yeah, we've all had a moment like that where it's like, God, what were you doing in this? My, my grandma passed away at cancer. And being a pastor's kid, my parents dragged me to a church conference in California. Yay, how fun is that? Another pastor kid thing I get to do. And here I am preaching, LOL. <laughs> and, and so I, I get to, we're at this church thing and this, this, <laughs> this very large man named Robbie Dawkins stands up and starts talking about getting rid of the lies. And I'm like, man, this is cool. He showed a clip from Lord of the Rings. I'm like, yeah, Jesus is cool again. You know, and at the end, they, they start praying, and I just, I, I don't know how to describe it. I just go to my knees, and I'm just crying, and I just hear God tell me, like, I, I love you, and I'm sorry. And in that moment, I just was crying, I was weeping, and I just really felt this heat like I've never felt before. Never in my life have I felt that. And there is this new freedom that I walked in. Right after that, my dad couldn't find me. We were outside in this outdoor tent. There was this massive snot puddle, as he describes it. And, and, and I went back to, so that was in the summer. I went back to school. I'm in seventh grade, a seventh grader. Whew, bless my parents for putting up with me. And um, I, I, I'm in school, and after like the first week, the teacher pulls me aside and she says, hey, there is something different about you. What happened? And I said, Jesus finally got a hold of me. <laughs> Jesus finally got a hold of me. And after that, I started having moments where Jesus would just give me random stuff. And it was like, man, this has to be Jesus. For example, we were driving home one day and I felt God tell me, hey, get out and go pray for th this person over here. I'm like, well, that's weird. Might as well do it. <laughs> right? So I get out of the car. I go over. It, it's, uh, it's our, it was our old youth pastor's wife at the time. And uh, she was pregnant. And she was actually experiencing a lot of like uh, pain in her pregnancy. So I go over. I say, hey, Jesus told me to come over and pray for you. Can I pray for you? So I start praying for her. She's bawling. I'm this 12-year-old. It's like, Jesus, just please help her. Please, Jesus, please. My voice was really that squeaky. <laughs> And all of a sudden, she's just crying. I don't know if it was her hormones or what, but she's like, man, I just feel so much better, right? And God met her right in that moment. And if I was still tracking with my previous thought line of, man, God is just awful. He doesn't love me. He doesn't, he doesn't see me. And, it's, and in that moment where I got hit with this presence, there's this new freedom that came on my life. And it changed the way I look at everything. And there's definitely been moments where I, I've got away from that freedom because where, where the Spirit of the Lord is there is freedom. And I've gotten away from that. But there's also been moments where it's just, it, I have to get back to that. And I feel like what I'm supposed to speak about tonight is getting back to that moment, right, for all of us where it's like, Jesus, you are what is most important. You are what is most important. I'd love it if you turn to Isaiah 61 with me. This is one of my favorite scriptures of all time. I, I, if you've 
been at the church and heard me preach before, I've definitely got it into like every single sermon I've preached and worked it in somehow. (laughs) The Spirit of the Sovereign Lord is on me because the Lord has anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim freedom for the captives and release from darkness for the prisoners. I'm going to reread that just so you get it. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim freedom for the captives, and release from darkness for the prisoners, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all who mourn and provide for those who grieve in Zion, to bestow on them a crown of beauty instead of ashes, the oil of joy instead of mourning, and a garment of praise instead of a spirit of despair. They will be called oaks of righteousness, a planting of the Lord for the display of his splendor. They will rebuild the ancient ruins and restore the places long devastated. They will renew the ruined cities that have been devastated for generations. So this is called the Messiah's mandate. And this is what was prophesied about Jesus. And then in John 19, Jesus takes it and says, everything that I have and everything that's been spoken over me, I now go give to you. And so now this becomes our mandate. Our mandate is to free people. Can we say that again? Free people, free people. Let's try it again. Free people, free people. Sorry, I I didn't didn't do a good job leading you all on that. We are called to set captives free. We are called to set captives free. We are called to be an oak of righteousness, a planting for the display of the Lord's splendor. Have you ever thought about that? We're called to renew places long devastated and ruined cities. That sounds like a lot of work, but it's not when you have Jesus. Because our God can move mountains. Amen? Amen. And right now we see God starting especially to just restore families. There's this this new move of, of people that are just so passionate to see families restored. If you turn with me to Luke 117, we see this prophesied in Scripture. And he will go before the Lord in the spirit and the power of Elijah to turn the hearts of parents to their children and the disobedient to the wisdom of the righteousness to make ready a people prepared for the Lord. And we already see God starting to restore generations of families that have been broken again and again and again and again. There, there is just this really amazing grace on families right now. And I truly believe that one of the next big moves of God is going to come through healthy families. It's going to come through healthy families. There are so many things trying to ensnare us and distract us from what is most important. And that is Jesus. It feels like everywhere you go, people just want you to consume <laughs> and consume and consume and consume. And I just really feel the Lord just taking us in a different direction. He said, I don't want you to, con- I want you to consume me, obviously. He wants us to consume him in his presence, but he wants us to create. I feel like there is this, this new um, creativity that is just going out and the, the paint to sing, to write poetry to the Lord. There's just this, this time where it's, it's enough consuming, enough watching what other people can create. It's time for us to be creators. It's time. The enemy is so focused on getting you confused about yourself and what should be important and who you should be mad at. Because when he gets you to step into that, you focus on that and not Jesus. Amen? Amen. It's so important that we align ourselves with Jesus. It's so important. In order to have a culture where you are a free person in Christ, you need to have Jesus as your number one. You have to have Jesus as your number one. In in the States especially, we see work getting put above everything else. We love to work. And since we're American, we're so dang good at it. Can I get an amen? (laughs) That's, That's funny. Is anyone not American in here? Okay, that's cool. I, I, I like international, so I'm cool with that too. But, you know, we, we put work above our families, above Jesus. We may put a person above that. We may put a conspiracy theory news network above that. And we're in Canyon City. I know that that's around. <laughs> this is true. <laughs> 
You know, it is time that we get rid of all these things and put Jesus back on the throne as our number one in the place that he deserves. Because when we do that and when we say, I'm getting rid of this, I'm getting rid of this, I just want you, Jesus, I'm, I'm just looking at you, then all of a sudden, the spirit of the, we're able to just see so clearly. And the spirit of the Lord just brings new revelation the Holy Spirit just really is the greatest teacher. And in that, you will see things start to happen in your mind like, hey, I used to do that, but I don't do that anymore. I'm a child of God. And so whatever is tying you and whatever you're being held captive to, whether it's uh, an addiction, which uh, one of the biggest sin of all is, is just wanting something that you can't have. That's what sin is. It just boils down to that. And so it's just getting rid of that. Hopefully you guys don't feel too condemned. <laughs> how do we get free and how do I know if I'm ensnared by something? Here are some questions you can ask yourself to see if you are a captive or if you are free. Where does most of my time go? Where does most of my time go? Is it work? Is it family? Is it playing DraftKings on your phone? March Madness. I don't think anyone likes March Madness. That's fine. <laughs> Next question. Am I worth anything? Do you think you're worth something? Do you think you have value? Because I can tell you right now, you're a child of God and that each and every one of you carries a different aspect of the Father. You're so beautifully and wonderfully made. Am I stuck? Do you see in your life that it's repeated habits, that I get a job, I get fired. I get a new job, I get fired. I go to school, I fail school. I go to school, I fail school. I try and have a girlfriend, the girlfriend dumps me. I try, does this make sense? Are you stuck? Do I try and stay away from people? Man, COVID has given so many people an excuse to get away from people. It, 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 it's, that's just the truth. I, I do it too. <laughs> I've definitely been convicted. It's so much easier to just get on Zoom and stay in bed, right? And there's definitely some real health issues with that, so we want to be wise. But man, we were made to be in community. We were made to be around people. As much as you may hate them, you were made to be around them. It's biblical. Go look in Hebrews. Am I scared to commit? People are so terrified to commit. So terrified to commit. That's why we see so many people living together before they're married. Because they want to go get something, and if all of a sudden they're not able to get that thing that they want, they leave, and they have a, a right to leave. People are scared to commit. We see Judas do this right before he betrays Jesus. Jesus says, let's take a covenant. Judas gets up and goes, goes and turns him in. <laughs> we want to commit and to commit to the things of the Lord and the things that he has for us. Do I focus on what makes me happy? Am I excited for life? Do I have something worth living for? If you answered yes to any of these questions, then you are enamored with something that is not Jesus. You are focusing on stuff that is not Jesus. And it's time that we get back to just loving Jesus. Amen? Amen. <sighs> Things that keep us frozen, not free. Can we say frozen, not free? Frozen. The first thing, caring what people think. This can freeze us and not free us. Isn't that fun, that cool play on words? <laughs> caring what people think can just make you a captive, guys. Fear of man has to go. As, as we walk with Jesus, look at Jesus. Did Jesus care? <laughs> this is the same guy who, who flipped over tables and made a bull whip, okay? But if you look at John 4, I, I'm not going to dive into it because I'm already short on time, but in John 4, Jesus does everything that every normal person in his day and age would care about. And did Jesus care about what any of them thought? No. His own disciples were like, Jesus, bro, what you doing, bro? And he's like, I'm following the Father. <laughs> okay? <laughs> Jesus says, I only do what I see my Father doing. In John 4, the, the, just to give you a quick summary of the story, they're trying to get to this this place over yonder. And what Jesus does is he cuts through the most hated people group of that time's territory right through Samaria. He goes to this well. His disciples go in to get food. And then what does Jesus do? He talks to the most oppressed group, which was a woman. Women were so oppressed. And Jesus was the original women's liberation movement, if you didn't know. 
And so what Jesus did is he, he restores that woman and he says, I see you. You're the most oppressed. You're also Sumerian, right? And, and I see you and I love what I see. He restores her. He didn't care what people think. He walked in freedom and it's important that we get to that level. I wonder how many times we have this, this urging in our spirit to go do something good and then we think, oh, but Johnny's right next to me and he, he'd probably think I'm weird. It, it's time that we cut that off and move into the freedom of the Lord. Next thing, our beliefs about ourselves can limit us. The greatest athletes in the world are the greatest self-talkers. Michael Jordan, Serena Williams, Tom Brady, um, whoever else you consider great. I don't watch golf, so I don't consider them like the best, but you know, there, there is this, they, they self-talk. They, they say, man, I'm awesome at this. I, I was born to play basketball. I'm going to make this shot. And it's important that we get to that place of not thinking bad things. There is life or death in the tongue. And it's important that we speak life. We have to if we want to be people of freedom and if we want to be people of joy. We have to. So when you're, <laughs> I, I've been really struggling getting up in the morning. So what I do now is I roll over and I say, thank you, Jesus, I'm here. Thank you, Jesus, my knee works. Thank you, Jesus, my other knee works. Thank you, Jesus. And I just keep doing it as I slowly get out of bed. Oh, it's miserable. <laughs> but praising the Lord makes it better. When you are feeling, I'm, I'm, I'm dead serious about this. When you are feeling just struggling anything, man, just start praising the Lord and you will see that start to shift immediately. Praise him in the, in the bad and praise him in the good. There is going to be a shift that's going to be taken because that is a weapon of spiritual warfare. Partnering with things that aren't of God can keep us frozen and not free. If you turn to Galatians 5 with me, we're just going to read this. I'm going to start in 19. These are, things that, these are things that you can partner with that aren't of God. The acts of the flesh are obvious. Sexual immorality, impurity and debauchery, idolatry and witchcraft, hatred, discord, jealousy, fits of rage, selfish ambition, dissensions, factions, envy, drunkenness, orgies, and the like. I warn you as I did before that those who live like this will not inherit the kingdom of God. If we tie ourselves to hatred, which is run rampant in our country right now, we're, gonna, we're just going down. We need to get rid of that. In, in Scripture, it says to bless those who persecute you. I don't know how many of you actually, when, you, when someone persecutes you or something happens like that, you turn around and say, I'm just going to start blessing. I, I have a hard time doing it too. It's, this, it's so unnatural to bless something that persecutes you. But then we get the fruit of the Spirit because where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. And what the Spirit brings is the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, forbearance, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Against such things there are no law. Those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified the flesh with its passion and desires. Since we live by the Spirit, let us keep in step with the Spirit. In step with the Spirit. Putting other things before Jesus, thou shalt have no idols before me. That can keep you frozen and not free. Am I, are you guys tracking with what I'm putting now? Is this a little hard to swallow? Just a little bit? It's okay. I, there, there just has to be this, this shift that takes place. And in that, in that passage of Scripture, he says, and our flesh died. Our flesh died with Christ Jesus. When we accept Jesus, we start anew. That's why when we baptize, you go down. And when you come up, you're new. You're throwing away all the old. But the thing is, we still let ourselves be enamored by things that aren't Jesus. And so how are we going to free people if we're still enamored with things of the world? We have to get to the best news there is, which is the good news. It's time to turn off the TVs, Fox, CNN, the whole works, and it's time to focus on the good news. I'm not saying pull away from the world and the current events, but we need to filter and take captive what's coming into our minds. Truly. I'd love it if you turn to Exodus 14 with me. I'm going to do a quick summary to, keep you up, to catch you up on what's taking place in this story. So in Exodus, um, they're all enslaved by the Egyptians. 
And then God picks this guy named Moses and sends him and his cousin Aaron to bring them to freedom. And so in that, they see multiple different signs and wonders. The river turning to blood, locusts, gnats, um, famine, uh, give me the, the plague of the firstborn, right? Yes, other stuff. <laughs> and we see God do that over and over again, and Pharaoh's heart is still hard. And so it, after, after um, all the firstborn Egyptians die, Pharaoh's like, get out of here. So that's where we find ourselves in this story. Sorry, I turned to the wrong page. Okay, Exodus 14. So they're, they're out in the wilderness. They're free. They're doing good. Okay? And then, as Pharaoh approached, the Israelites looked up, and there were the Egyptians marching after them. They were terrified and cried out to the Lord. They said to Moses, Was it because there were no graves in Egypt that you brought us to the desert to die? What have you done by bringing us out of Egypt? Didn't we say to you in Egypt, Leave us alone, let us serve the Egyptians? It would have been better for us to serve the Egyptians than to die in the desert. Here's this beautiful moment of breakthrough that God brings them to. And that's their response. Huh, I wonder if we do that today. Power pause. <laughs> Okay, now why don't you turn with me to Numbers 14, 1 through 4. I'm, I'll finish. I'm going to come back to that story and tell you how it ends. But. So the Egyptians, they make it out of that situation. They're getting close to the promised land. They send out scouts. Oh, let's go scout the land. The scouts come back, say the land is plentiful. The grapes are huge. The honey flows great. But the problem is there's a lot of armies there, a lot of big giants. And, after he, and Caleb and Joshua are like, no, this land's for ours. God told us it's ours. And the, this is the Israelites in heaven. That's where we find ourselves in verse 1. That night, all the members of the community raised their voices and wept out loud. All the Israelites grumbled against Moses and Aaron. And the whole assembly said to them, if only we had died in Egypt or in the wilderness. Why is the Lord bringing us into this land only to let us fall by the sword? Our wives and children will be taken as plunder. Wouldn't it be better for us to go back to Egypt? And they said to each other, we should choose a leader and go back to Egypt. What on earth, guys? I really hope that I don't respond to this in moments like this. <laughs> There's a couple things to take away from this historic event. First off, after they got out of Egypt... God led them by a pillar of fire at night and a cloud by day. And they see Egyptians coming and they're like, oh no, we should just go back and get back in captivity. Excuse me? <laughs> then turn around and it's like the Red Sea parts for all of them to go through. Literally, God makes a way where they feel like there is none. This is the same God that they saw do all these crazy wonder and signs, but they forgot his nature and the simple fact that he loves them and wants the best for them. In Romans, it says, all things work together for those who love. Who love God. And it just boils down to that. They forgot that God loved them. And I feel like we've forgotten that. You know, a couple things to take away from this historic event is their mindset sucked. <laughs> they didn't believe that God could deliver them. Right after he did all sorts of signs and wonders to deliver them. I mean, I mean for real. We don't even get to see if, I mean, I haven't seen a pillar of fire lead me. I'm praying for one. I, I, I'd love to see that in a, in a cloud of glory. And, and they're just like, oh, man, we're, we're really in trouble. It's the same God that brought them. Then they get close to this land that God promised them. God said, you are going to get this land. And they said, oh no, we won't be able to take it. We have to remember that our God is bigger than any problem we will ever face. And our God is bigger than anything that will ever enamor us and enslave us to whatever it is, to whatever idol that, that is hanging above God, whatever we need to do to get that thrown back to where it's the King of kings and Lord of Lords. There's this, we have to get to this place of our God is good. Another takeaway. They looked for someone to blame other than themselves. Ooh, that's probably really hard to hear. <laughs> I, I do it too. 
I, I just think about professional sports. As soon as the Broncos do something wrong, I'm like, oh, it's that coach. <laughs> uh, it's probably the players. Who knows? <laughs> right? And the, that's what they did. As soon as, as soon as things go south, they're like, let's get rid of Moses and Aaron and find someone to lead us back into captivity. Man, if you are stuck and you are in a, a cycle of addiction or a, sty- a cycle of just bad thoughts or, or mental health or you're struggling with something and you're not free, then don't blame others. We have to be a people that take ownership for our mistakes. So, so many people have a hard time with the way us Christians are interacting with the world is because we're not owning our mistakes. We're not saying, hey, I got it wrong. And it's really important that we start owning our part of it and praising God throughout it so we can see that absolutely be reversed. Number three, they would rather be captive than free. How easy is it to go back into that same thing that you've been struggling with? It's easy, right? It's so easy. I know, I I felt it's just so easy just to go back. But the reality is, is when we step up, when we're like David in Scripture and we say, there's a giant here, I'm going to step up. I want to fight that giant, meaning whatever is ensnaring you, that's enslaving you. And as soon as you defeat that giant with God, do you know what happens? Everyone around you gets breakthrough, and you do too. It is so important that we step up and take whatever we're struggling with head on. Come on. I mean, David had five rocks and a slingshot against the 10-foot tall man with a massive spear. The reason David did that is because he knew God had his back and he was going to deliver him. When we step up, we have to be sure that God is going to deliver us because he will. He will. Number four, they were captive to fear. They were captive to fear. The Israelites were just so captured by fear. Fear is the equal opportunity destroyer. If you are afraid, you will not do something. The greatest leaders in all the Bible moved by putting fear to the side. I'm I'm sure all of them would say, I I felt fearful. But they, they pushed the fear and stepped up into that battle to bring breakthrough not only for themselves, but everyone around. That's why it's so important that we free people and get free ourselves. You know, Paul, in in Scripture, one of the greatest apostles of all time who wrote most of the New Testament, he was a murderer, dragging people out of their houses, killing them, stoning them. (laughs) He was a terrorist. And, And what happened was God had a moment with him And God said, Paul, why are you persecuting me? And the bright light shined on him. And in that moment, Paul knew that he was after the wrong thing. He knew that he had put something else on his throne. And then (laughs) he can't see because the light shone on him. So then uh, God sends this Christian to go pray for him. And this Christian's like, hey, this is the guy that murdered him. God's like, I'm going to protect you. Don't even worry. Guy gets there, prays for his eyes. Paul can see again. And next thing you know, Paul just starts to dive into Jesus like never before. And Paul ends up freeing people through that. And it's so important that we get to that place too, where we throw away our old selves and get to a place where we look to free people and to love people so well. So well. It's, I'm just so stuck with this this thought that we just need to just shake off just whatever we're carrying and just give it to Jesus. There's this old hymn that I just absolutely adore. It's all to Jesus, I surrender. You guys have all heard it before, right? And it really captures the essence of when we accept Jesus, we need to surrender. Because when we worry, we put something above Jesus. When we fear and let ourselves be captured by that fear, we put something above Jesus. And we were called to be free people because where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. Can I have the, my ministry team guys come up to the front? Tracy, you want to come up? Pat, Susie, I'd love it if you guys came too. My worship team. Uh, We're going to have this, I I really feel like the Lord wants to just release His presence tonight. And and what I feel like that that looks like is I feel like if, if you have, just been listening to me talk about this amazing man named Jesus and you have never experienced his presence before. His presence, he wants to meet with you. 
He wants to meet with you. He wants to show you things. He wants to talk to you. Jesus is a man about relationship. He's not here for your religion. He's here for your heart. He's here for your heart. And so I'd love it if we closed our eyes. And if you want to know this Jesus that brings freedom, if you want this, this one answer that changed change your entire life, if you want Jesus and you've never had him before, we just want to create a space for you to invite Jesus into your heart. And if, and if that's you, I'd love it if you just raised your hand. I feel like there's two people in the room that, that Jesus has just been after you, that you were just dedicated to him when you were a child, and I, I just feel like God is just calling you to come home. And if you don't want to raise your hand, that's fine. You, you, you should, please come find one of us after service, but I'm going to wait just a second longer because I have a really strong feeling about this. Thank you, Jesus. And then the next thing we want to do is we want to invite you to experience His presence. We want to invite you to just get filled up. We've been just being poured into by all these different teams and, and we just want to pour out. If you have never experienced the Lord like it said when we read that scripture in Acts 19 where they were prophesying and speaking in tongues, man, th this is for you. If you've always been wondering if, if, if God is out there, this is, this is your time. This is time to step up and experience it. We've really felt God just moving all throughout today and that there is just this fresh anointing that He just wants to pour out on His children because He just loves you guys so much. He loves you so much. And so if you're feeling like, I just need to be touched from God, I just need to experience Jesus. I want to be free so I can free others. I'd love it if you stood and just were so brave and you just stood and said, I, I need a touch. I want to touch. I want to experience what Jesus is like. So if that's you, can you please stand? I just say, is any spirit of religion just go right now in the name of Jesus? Anything that's rising up saying, I, I don't want that, I don't need that, I got everything I need. I just command that to go right now in the name of Jesus. I just pray freedom right now. God, I just pray that you start opening hearts to your move. I just start, oh, can we stand, guys, just where you're at? I'm not going to make you come down. I don't think you all like that. Just stand where you're at. The Lord's doing something really special. Right now, I'd love it if you put your hands out in a receiving posture like this. He just wants to give you a gift. He just wants to give you a gift. Prayer team, you guys are released. Go find someone that God's highlighting to you. Go pray. I, I'm just going to pray a general prayer over you guys. So Jesus, right now, I just proclaim freedom. I just come against anything that is just holding people captive. God, just help us just to get back to that place of you are our first love. Jesus, you are our first love. And you see us, Jesus, and you like what you see. So God, right now, I just pray that you just move hearts, God, towards you. God, I just pray, I just come against, once again, any spirit of religion or anything that's rising up saying, I don't need Jesus because we just need Jesus more than anything. So God, just come and have your way. Holy Spirit, just come. Just come. Just right now, just flow in this place. More, Jesus. More. More. Is there someone with some neck pain? Does anyone have neck pain? Please raise your hand if you have neck pain. Yeah? You have neck pain? Elias, why don't you go get his, his neck pain? What, yeah. Yeah, go, go get it. Pain just be gone right now in the name of Jesus. Yeah. Prayer team, leadership team, look around. If you see someone highlighted to you, go. And if you're just re experiencing the Lord right now, you might feel some heat. You might feel some tingling, some electricity. He is just here and He is moving and He is touching hearts. Yeah. Tracy, can you go pray for Alicia? I just, I just see something over you, Mom. I just feel like God has something for you right now. Yeah. Does anyone feel a really big calling to help the poor? Yeah? You have a really big calling to help the poor? Anna, do you want to pray for her? I, I feel like God, Maddie, God sees that and He absolutely loves that. He absolutely loves that about you. He sees that. 
He sees you. Yeah. So God, just move right now. If you're not feeling anything or just think, or you're just, just keep praying and just saying, Jesus, I love you. Jesus, I love you. When I've had moments where I haven't felt him or anything like that, I just say, Jesus, I love you. And next thing you know, I'm shaking violently <laughs> under his presence. He just loves you so much. And if you want to experience that, just say, Jesus, I want to experience you. I want your presence. I want your presence. I want your presence. What happened with his neck? Okay, let's get him when he gets back. The Lord's here. Yeah. Yeah, just keep receiving. Even if it's awkward, let's just, let's just try and receive for another minute. Another minute and two. Just keep saying, Jesus, I want to I know you more. I want to experience you, Jesus, in new ways. God, right now, just move. I just pray that you just touch each and every one that's here, God, that you just fall on them in a fresh way, in a new way, God, and that you just open their eyes, God, that you are here and you love them so much. I feel like God's moving across the room and picking out missionaries. I feel like there are a couple of you that really feel called internationally. And for some of you, you thought it was just to travel, but God's calling you to travel for Him. Is that anyone in the room? Does anyone feel a call to travel internationally and do missions? Anyone? Okay. <laughs> Curtis, why don't you turn around and pray for them? Yeah. If you're receiving right now, just keep receiving. Brooke, can you pray for Brooke? <laughs> Brooke, there's, there's something really sweet on you right now. I just see God kind of surrounding you in a hug, and He just really adores you. And so I'm just going to have Brooke come and just bless that right now. <laughs> yeah, God, thank you so much for what you're doing. Thank you so much for what you're doing. Yeah. Yeah, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. We're just going to hold on for it. it. 